Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. In 1997, I had all access to my fears and insecurities and all access to what I could become. With two years of teaching under my belt, I decided to leave the classroom and take a job working with student athletes at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. One of the perks of the job was taking classes for free, so I signed up for the hardest course, a running class with a fanatic exercise science teacher at the helm, Dr. David uh, Horton. He had set the record for the Appalachian Trail and the Trans-American Race, a 4,200 mile race. He was a beautiful lunatic. The first day of class, we didn't review a syllabus. That morning, we headed for the trails. Five minutes in, and I could only see a glimpse of the tribe ahead of me, and I could only hear the incessant shouting of Dr. Horton saying, let's go, Mom, try to keep up. Because at 30, he had dubbed me Mom, because I was the oldest in the group. When I finally caught up because, with the group because they had stopped, I wore the battles of exhaustion. I had fallen repeatedly, blood oozing from my shins, spit spewing from my mouth, begging for water. The stopping point was a point of mercy. In the huddle, Dr. Horton debriefed with each of us to set our personal goals and to give each of us his personal prescription for the runners he thought we could be. My teammates, who all looked like they could be ripped from the covers of men's and women's health magazines, talked about increasing their split marathon times. I had nothing to say. I only tried to gain some dignity, wiping the snot that covered my face and shirt. When Dr. Horton got to me, he said, Mom, I like your guts. I can't wait to see what you're going to become. But, you know, you're robust. You need to get some shoes that are going to give you some balance. Go to the store tonight. Get a pair of size 9 men's beasts. Then he ran off singing his favorite Shania Twain song, Any Man of Mine. <laughs> and I sat there in disbelief, stunned but awed by what he thought I was capable of doing. I limped back to campus all the while thinking about what he said. I was a beast. I could be a beast. So I showed up for the next class and the next and the next, each feel filled with different demands and routines. I would climb hills repeatedly, sometimes on all fours. I would come down from them using different strategies, like hoping I wouldn't die, to adjust to the terrain. I would walk for miles, jog, then sprint, then repeat. Other members of the class who were stronger and faster would run with me at intervals. All the while, Dr. Horton gave me feedback and then cheered me to pick up the pace. In between classes, I headed for the trails alone. Alone for hours, alone with my thoughts, and alone with my new confidence. Over the next few years, I ran many races, becoming the runner Dr. Horton said I would be. A runner who could do more than just keep up. Dr. Horton knew what I needed, and he partnered with me to make it happen. From the start, he, needed, I, he, knew, he knew I needed a plan that was different than the other runners, and he never relented in believing that I, I could accomplish what seemed to be impossible at that time. A passion, enthusiasm, and an audacity to take risks. He had shared with me the trust that grows in the power of relationships. 23 years later, and the confidence that Dr. Harp Horton Champion still rallies me, defining my spirit as a teacher. It's an armor that battles the whispers and the giants that attempt to derail and slay, and a call to courage to pass it on and share it with every student, even in my greatest moments of weakness. Dr. Horton was an accomplished runner, but it was the relationships he built and the respect for what each of his students needed that inspired engagement, agency, and incredible outcomes that defined him. He gave me an opportunity personalized to my ability and to my spirit. 
Nothing is more transformative than this kind of regard and love for human potential. Nothing sweeter, nothing higher, nothing stronger, nothing more joyful, nothing fuller, and nothing better. There is a power and urgency in this love. We cannot underestimate it. There is nothing it cannot conquer. The obstacles that seek to blur and blind, no chance. Because there is a power in love to help and heal, to lift and liberate when nothing else can, when nothing else will. The boldness to stand up to the monsters of poverty and indifference to the cynics and naysayers. It bravely says to the opposition, you don't stand a chance. It is that love that I've relied on and a love that has challenged me. And it was this love and conviction that where I began to question the efficacy of my instruction in recent years, that sparked a desire to do things differently. Because more and more, I did not see engagement in my students. What I did see in other classrooms that were personalized, the exhilarating energy of engagement and achievement, achievement when kids were invested in the work, when they were passionate about what they had a stake in, when they were released to explore, investigate, and demonstrate their learning in personalized ways. Immersed in an academic world of discovery where choice is their American Express card, where every kid kids who have scrolls of referrals to kids who were headed to the ivy walls of college, all were engaged and empowered. The swell and urgency to make engagement roar has intensified in our district and in this building. And I wanted and want to be a part of it, to be a part of a team of risk takers, to pursue a new journey, risk takers, who believe in the beautiful rewards and outcomes that come from struggle and failure. My option teammates have inspired me to take risks, to have the courage to say yes, even when success is not guaranteed. Because as Amy Fast says, an educator I admire, in every space, there should be, it should be a goal for every stakeholder to feel significant and inspired and slightly uncomfortable as those are the optimal conditions where greatness grows and thrives. I am proud to be a courageous member of a district, a community, willing to engage personalized ways of learning because of the agency it gives students. In saying yes to doing things differently, we say yes to vulnerability. Where courage lives, the extraordinary will to make a difference. To be humbled each day to make sure every student knows his or her incredible worth. In saying yes, we tell our students that their lives are magic. In saying yes, we show our students that we are soldiers, warriors for their potential that we will love and encourage them through second and third and however many chances so they believe in the power of empathy and know the great and inspiring companion of hope, that they can change the world. I believe deeply in the power of relationships and the incredible joy that comes from that trust. In her me recent memoir, Melinda Gates describes her fascination with the phrase, the moment of lift. Gates's father was an aerospace engineer who had worked on the Apollo program. As a child, she would pile in the car with her siblings and her father's friend, who was also an engineer for Apollo, to watch the magic of the launch. She de detailed the suspenseful countdown, countdown and the thrill she felt especially that moment of lift when the engines ignited, the earth shook, and the rocket started to rise. She came across the phrase, a moment of lift, in a book by Mark Nepo. He used the words to capture a moment of grace. He said, something was like a scarf on the wind, 
and his grief went silent and he felt whole. His image of Lyft was filled with curiosity and awe. But how does Lyft happen? Gates compared her wonder to sitting on a plane at the end of a long takeoff run, waiting anxiously for the moment of lift. Why, she asked, does it sometimes take so long and why does it sometimes happen so fast? What takes us past the tipping point when the forces pushing us up overpower the forces pulling us down and we're lifted from the earth and begin to fly? She believes the moment of lift is an urgent call to courage, to pursue what is possible in the world. I believe we have summoned our moment of lift in engaging a personalized learning experience for our students because we believe in the power of human potential of every student, because we believe personalized learning will accelerate engagement, empowerment, student ownership, and achievement. We are guardians of this moment, stewards of this new beginning. Let's root for each other. Because we can, because we must, because our students are depending on us, counting on us to persevere, to show them that nothing is impossible. Thank you.